Good morning and welcome to Rising. Robbie, we have just an incredible show. Rogan top to bottom. So much Rogan news. Rogan. What else, what else do we have? Ryan and Robbie on Rising, recapping Rogan. Rogan, the Rogan. Five R's for there you. you go. We'll also have Jennifer Holdsworth Carp and Amy Tarkanian. They're here for our Rising panel where we'll discuss a new Monmouth poll that finds a vast majority of Americans are ready for the country to move on, to moveon.org, learn to live with COVID. Then Batya Unger-Sargan joins us to break down Whoopi Goldberg's controversial statements about the Holocaust, yeesh, as well as Rachel Maddow's temporary exit from primetime news. But before we get into all that, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has tested positive for COVID, this after condemning the Freedom Convoy 2022 and following nearly a week of driving, the convoy has made its way to the U.S.-Canada border crossing into Alberta, where thousands of people have gathered to protest vaccine mandates for truckers and other public health restrictions. So this comes as Nova Scotia issued a highway blockade ban in anticipation of the convoy. The ban prohibits partial or complete blockades on all roads in the province. As of January 15th, a new law requires truckers returning from the U.S. to show proof of vaccination. A similar mandate was implemented for truckers here in the U.S. I like the idea of passing a law that says you can't do this. Like it's a protest. <laughs> right. Oh. right. Oh, it's against the law? Okay. Well, I know. It's, uh, it's, why, it's actually why I don't know. They're having this in Canada. We're not having any sort of mass protest, mass resistance to COVID mandates, even though I would say, if this isn't offensive to our Canadian brethren, I would say we have a greater history of, well, we have a First Amendment, we have more protections for protesting. Um, I think we're a, we're a more unruly yes. populist. We're more individualistic, they're more communitarian. Right. Right? I think that's fair to say. Yeah, but they're sure. outraged over this. Uh, and you know, and right, rightly so, I'm against all the vaccine mandates. Um, I don't love the idea of like roads being blocked. I mean, this was something yes, we encountered. Yes, sorry. <laughs> to be perfectly consistent. Robbie's uh, two values <laughs> conflicting here. Very against COVID <laughs> mandates, very against uh, uh, people being inconvenienced. But I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not at all demonizing them. I totally support their cause. Some truckers spoke to reporters at the border about their decision to stand their ground. Let's watch that. So, so you guys just came into a decision there that uh, most of you guys are going to stay and it seems like the compromise is opening a lane, is that correct? Yes, we're going to open up the, the northbound lane and let the guys that come out, out of the U.S., we're going to let them go. We're going to open up that lane and let guys go, um, but they have to open up a lane on their end to let guys leave because we're actually boxed in here right now, so they did not want to negotiate. So we're going to let that lane go, and then we're going to actually go talk to them and see if they're going to compromise. And You said the police weren't uh, willing to negotiate? They were not willing to negotiate when we went down there to talk earlier. There was no negotiations um, allowed. They didn't want nothing to do with it. So we uh, read the, the charter that came in in 2020. It says if we open a lane, uh, we can stay here as long as we want. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to open up that lane, and anybody that wants to leave can leave, and anybody that wants to stay can stay. So this way, you know, it's, it's all about freedom, right? Prime Minister Trudeau slammed the convoy as he quarantined with COVID on Monday. He has also said he will not meet with the truckers who promote, quote, hate and anti-science views. Trudeau and his family were moved from their home in Ottawa to a secret location as thousands of people descended on the Capitol over the weekend. And it seems Ottawa City is on the PM side. In a now deleted tweet, the Ottawa City Councilor said they would move for legal action to seize the nearly $10 million from the convoy's GoFundMe to put in city coffers as a general punishment for weekend protests. Jesus. And while social media has been trolling Trudeau over his descriptions of the protests, MSNBC is suggesting that the truckers are a cult who steal from homeless shelters. Yes. They've become what they hated. They've become what they mocked. And now they're taking food from soup kitchens because they're so put upon for being asked to do what they've been asked to do, required to do, their entire lives. Coming it's up. It's a cult. <laughs> yes, it is. So these claims come despite videos showing Ottawa City volunteers are giving away food, water, and drinks to the truckers, including amenities uh, for dogs who are part of the convoy. The truckers have received hate and praise on social media, most notably receiving support from politicians and celebrities, including Tesla billionaire Elon Musk, who fired back at Trudeau, saying the fringe minority is actually the government in, uh, in tweets about the protest. Sick burn there. Our Musk, hero, Musk, Elon. Musk always coming in with a sick burn. Freedom fighter. He's good. He, he's a good. He's good on Twitter. 
He's no, good he's, at it. he's a good poster. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, MSNBC is, they're getting around to, probably eventually, it's Russia. Russia did this. Russia planted the, <laughs> the, the truckers, I think. Yeah, I don't know what they're oh, uh, talking we, we about. Oh, we probably will hear some of this. And, you know, t now, to be fair, I, the protests are not as large as the truckers suggested they would be. Uh, and certainly you're going to have a lot of Canadian public opinion that's not on the side of, of these truckers, particularly the ones in the middle who were like, Robbie, were like, mm, even if I kind of sympathize, this is getting really annoying. Right. It also shows, though, how, how much is possible if, you know, if direct action is taken. Here in the United States, what we learned during the pandemic is that you can really, really disrupt people's lives at just a few choke points of the economy. If you got the longshoremen, you got the teachers not showing up for school, longshoremen not showing up for work there, just that right there alone uh, would drive people completely insane because mm -hmm. now the supplies aren't moving. And then if you add to that the, uh, the like, uh, flight attendants union, they don't show up. Like A week of that and people would be ready to meet whatever demands. Like th Those three groups, teachers, flight attendants, and, and longshoremen, uh, have an immense amount of power if you see what you know, a couple thousand truckers are are able to do. That's a great point. Yeah, and and we haven't done that. And we have not. <laughs> there, I, I don't know why. It's, it's you don't it's, need a general strike anymore. No, like, that's it. Like that seizes everything. But we've up. we've had no concern. Or very little. I, I guess I shouldn't say no. There was the you know there was some protesting at state capitals what uh, two summers ago, uh, just the initial like anti lockdown stuff. But there hasn't been. Uh, uh, and there was the anti-vaccine mandate rally in D.C. a couple weekends ago. Right. There just, but there, there hasn't been a lot of, of concerted uh, political action, direct action to counter uh, our very, very broad mandates, our mandates that are, are no less broad than Canada's. So, yeah. it's, it's, uh, which, so it's, it's interesting that this is happening there and not here. I find that very interesting. And it's interesting that, and not surprising, I guess, that the Canadian government's not backing down. To me, Omicron is... Looks like it's starting to fade. Yeah. At this point, it feels like, what are you fighting over? Let's right. just forget about it. Let's just forget about it. Amen. Look, and I feel like I feel terrible because looking at those, looking at a couple of those guys on the video, you know, people are always like, I'm young and healthy. I'll be fine. Right. It's like, okay, well, you're not young and you're not healthy. Right. And you might not be fine, which reminds us of that, the Washington State trooper who was this gigantic celebrity. Laura Ingram talked about, you know, how, oh, what an amazing celebrity filled life he was going to live because he had done the mic drop and, and, and cursed at Jay Inslee as he was quitting his job over his jab, now dead of, of COVID, and has a GoFundMe up that the anti-vax community is just completely ignoring. Mm. He's so far he's raised, including from his unemployment and his death, uh, less than $8,000. It's like, guys, you guys were there to celebrate this man in, in quitting his job so that he didn't have to get the jab. He's now dead and you're not even gonna kick into his GoFundMe. Come on, what, like what, what, on, what on earth are you doing with yourselves here? Uh, but still, at this point, it's like, I'm like, yeah. it, it's terrible. But these are grown people. It's their choice. And at this point, I think the society has done everything for them, made, made the arguments, made them freely available. And at this point, well, at this point, squeezing harder is just clearly not working. It's not, that's, mandating, that's the other thing. mandating it harder is make is just right. making people more resistant. If it was going to work, that'd be one thing. That would it's be a debate working, you yeah. could have, but it's, it's not. also not even working. Right. Well, we'd like to pivot to some stateside news. The New York Times is reporting that former President Donald Trump had a helping hand in proposals to seize voting machines over voter fraud claims in 2020. This is according to new documents. Trump allegedly directed Rudy Giuliani to make the call to Ken Cusinelli to ask about DHS seizing voting machines. Trump's advisors drafted two versions of the executive order to take the voting machines. One directed the Department of Homeland Security and one directed the Department of Defense to do so. According to the Washington Post, some Trump White House documents that were handed over to the January 6th committee by the National Archives were reportedly torn up and taped back together. So tell me more about this, Ryan. Is this as damning as it no. sounds? I, I mean, I, I don't know. It, Trump says crazy things. He says, get me, get me this, do this, do that. Yeah. Was the, and the, but but I, my understanding is everyone said, well, no, we can't do that. So what, what this shows, what, what we already knew that people in his inner circle, Sidney Powell uh, and, and some of these other fringe yeah. uh, characters who were no longer fringe, were central advisors to the president, were telling him, you have the authority 
to declare a national emergency and get the military to go in and seize the ballots. And I think people should pause on that and think about that. So you're going to send the military in to seize ballot boxes. Like, that, what, like that's, that's nothing short of a coup. Like that's just, that's, there's, no, there's no defending that. There's, there's no rationalizing that, no matter how hard you want to try. So then the, then the question was, well, did Trump, was Trump OK with that? Was he in on that? Was he thinking about doing that? And so it turns out that uh, Rudy Giuliani talked him out of using the military. Giuliani was the voice of reason in the Oval Office. It's not a good sign. Who said, you, can, you can't send the troops in. And he said, There's no, you have to have, in order to send the troops in, you would have to have evidence that there was foreign government you know, manipulation of the voting tabulation. And there's Sidney Powell in the Oval Office. Eh, 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 I got that. She's like, China, Hugo Chavez, who's dead, as we talked about. Uh, but she kept blaming Hugo Chavez. So she's like, no, I have evidence of foreign interference. She, she was saying the same thing on, on television. And Rudy's like, no, you don't. Like, you, you don't actually have So You can't send in the military. So finally, like, OK, well, here's a compromise. What if we scratch out Department of Defense and fill in Department of Homeland Security? And we have those troops, civilian troops, go seize the ballot boxes. And that Trump was OK with. And so Trump told Giuliani, make it happen. At the same time, Trump was telling uh, uh, the Department of Justice, go seize these things. The Department of Justice told him to go pound sand. So Giuliani then goes to Cuccinelli Jr., uh, who is at, who's Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security. And Cuccinelli, to his credit, said no. Says no. Uh, so, it's the, so the center, Cuccinelli, you know, still held. But now we do know that, that Donald Trump himself uh, tried to get the Department of Homeland Security to seize voting machines in order to overturn the election. You could, I guess, say that that's a good thing, and he was doing it to protect the integrity of the election. No, <laughs> it was not a good thing. That's but, where we are. Like that is right. th those are the, the system agreed beat him upon facts. at every. He was thwarted in this right. clumsy, ridiculous, never going to work effort at every turn. Not by you know his never inner going, circle, but ne never going to work in 2020 with the apparatchiks that were in place. If you had different apparatchiks in place who agreed to do those things, then it could potentially work. Could potentially. It seems more likely he's just going to win outright. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> and that's the bigger problem for Democrats. And then implement right now, a, cons right a, conser a policy agenda that is far more conservative or more right wing than last time because he's going to have more legislative support on his side. And as he, as he learned from the wall, which he never got through legislatively and just did, what he's learned is that the president can just do things. And the only way for Congress to stop him is to impeach him. And they don't have the votes for impeachment, which means the president can just do things. And he has realized that. Yeah. Certainly if he wins re-election, that will have been demonstrated. Well, we'll be sitting around waiting for that. And we'll tell you what's on our radars coming up next. Stay with us.